In 2020, the NHS commissioned Dr Hilary Cass, a leading paediatrician, to review its gender services for children and young people. It's now been released and the ramifications could be huge. I'm pleased to say that I'm joined by Joe Partosh uh, from Spiked Online to discuss the findings. So let's get stuck into it. What are your take, what's your take from the impact that you think it will have? So I think it's, it's great that the, the research has been done and that this report's been published, but ultimately she, she's basically said what, what any thinking person ought to have known, that it was a really, really bad idea to give mentally confused kids experimental drugs, which is what puberty blockers are. So, um, so whilst I think it's absolutely brilliant that the research has been done, I think it's um, kind of, you know, a little bit late and um, it's almost something that had gender ideology not embedded itself within the NHS and within practices, it wouldn't have been necessary at all. I suppose, given that effectively what you're saying is people should have realised this anyway. Yes. People clearly weren't realising this, so maybe do you think the presence of the report will have an impact that might actually move the debate and convince minds? Well, I mean, to be honest, I, I interviewed um, uh, Susan Evans uh, four years ago. Now, she blew the whistle in uh, 2004 about what was happening at the Tavistock. I mean, these, these concerns are not new about the affirmative approach that was pushed by lobby groups like mermaids, like gendered intelligence. So, you know, so we have known for a long time. Mm. Um, but the tenor of the debate has been such it's been very, very difficult just to state basic biological truths, such as you can't change sex. Um, so, by way of an example, um, in 2019, I was at an event that was organised by campaigners Kelly J. Keane and Venice Allen at the House of Lords. And there was one MP there, and that was um, David Davies, TC Davies from Monmouth. Um, every other MP had been told that it would impact upon their career if they went to the event to discuss the impact of puberty blockers and what was going on at the Tavistock. So, you know, there has been a concerted effort to shut down debate on this, mm. and it's been driven by lobby groups. And I'm afraid to say those lobby groups have still got influence in the NHS. The uh, report itself speaks of the uh, toxicity of the debate, it, uh, but actually says that there's blame to be doled out on both sides. What are your feelings to that? Irritated, to be honest. Um, so I understand why she had to word it in such a sort of um, placatory way. I mean, it almost reads like a bloody hostage note. You know, you can tell that she feels like she's on enemy territory. I mean, it opens with a, a line that this is not to un invalidate the identities of trans people. Well, nobody ever said it was. It's not about that. It's about protecting children from making irreversible decisions. So on the one hand, you've had people branded as toxic who have just simply wanted to open up a discussion, open up a debate, and make sure that the evidence is there before we start effectively sterilising children. And on the other side, you've had very, very angry trans activists who have based their identities on this concept of the transgender child, and so have a real sort of personal vested interest in, um, in suppressing debate. I thought, I thought we'd be more hopeful. I thought speaking to you today, <laughs> you'd have more of a hopeful tone from this. But it's like the more we dig down, I, I don't sense it in you. I, I, I am. I mean, you know, it's vindicated the whistleblowers, but at the same time, you know, Polly Carmichael, she's on the books for um, GOSH, in, uh, the Great Ormond Street Hospital, and they're going to be providing new gender services. Now, you know, I, I think really her head should be on a bloody spike for what she's allowed to happen. Similarly, James Palmer, who um, oversaw, he's the medical director who oversaw um, specialist commissioning services. So, you know, these people knew what was happening. And they've kept their jobs. And you've had whistleblowers who have been pushed out, um, who have been trying to raise the alarm about this for a very long time. So I am hopeful, but at the same time, when you look at, for example, the Indigo Centre, which is a new centre that um, has been set up, set up in 2020, and that's in Manchester. Now, the, the people on the, the clinicians, um, on, on the sort of, Senior, most senior clinicians within that institution um, are also members of WPATH, so that's a, a widely discredited um, international lobby group, essentially. Um, they've worked with, they, they celebrate the fact they work with mermaids, and they call themselves trans and non-binary led. Now, that's a political stance. That's not a medical stance. So we are, we are still, we know we've got a lot of work to do to root this out of the NHS. So I saw someone discussing the fact that the, the language might not be what you wanted to hear in a sense, no. it's not the, the, the vindication that you wanted, but what it is, is language that's hard to accuse of being transphobic, which actually would have shut this down, which definitely would have meant that nothing would have come from this. Anyone who didn't like the results would have simply accused it of being some turf paper or whatever the phrase they would have used <laughs> online. Um, so maybe there is more hope in that, that actually if the core uh, summary is effectively saying, oh, you need evidence to do medical things, if 
if it's just boiled that down to that, do you think that's an argument that you could sell to people? Absolutely. I mean, to be honest, there's probably a bit of, you know, personal irritation, <laughs> yeah. which, is, which has crept in. But, but, yeah, I think, you know, when you strip aside this sort of um, very conciliatory language towards the trans activists, who are furious anyway, because they're always going to be, when you strip that aside, I think actually the recommendation she's made, so, for example... Um, making sure that there's a bridge service between the ages of 18 and 25 so that people aren't just shunted into adult services without the proper support. Things like that are really important and they will make a difference. So actually I think the, the recommendations are brilliant. I just find the framing is particularly irritating. Right, but, but personally irritating yes. rather than on the concept. <laughs> if I'm honest, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so with the way that the recommendations uh, are then laid out, do you think there's a chance that they'll be listened to? Well, there's a, there are protests being organised... Um, sort of on the outside of the NHS. And as I say, there was still a lot of activists within the NHS. I think it's very helpful that it came out before the parties released their manifestos. So, you know, we've had Wes Streeting um, sort of had a bit of a turnaround um, and has said that he's... Um, He's going to... It was a big 180, wasn't it? It yeah, was such was, a 180. Was. I think uh, Keir Starman might sue for breach of copyright. <laughs> well, yeah. And similarly, um, here's the other one. Um, Gillian Keegan, obviously, you know, Tory, all the rest of it. But a few years ago, she was saying trans women are women, and now she's, you know, writing uh, opinion pieces of complaining about cancel culture. So, you know, it's, things have changed, and that's brilliant. But at the same time, I would quite like to see some heads roll. Right. If this report doesn't bring about the change you'd like to see, what could happen next? I think we need an inquiry into how the hell um, sort of medically unqualified lobby groups were allowed, like mermaids, were allowed to influence policy. I think that's absolutely vital. So they promoted things that were repeated in Parliament by, you know, well, John Nicholson, amongst other MPs. Um, for example, that children were um, at risk of committing suicide if they weren't affirmed in their cross-sex identities. Now, that's a despicable thing to say. Um, and that, you know, obviously terrified parents into into allowing their children to, um, to take dangerous experimental drugs. So I think this is so serious that absolutely we need to have a proper investigation into how the hell this happened and to make sure that it doesn't ever happen again. OK, and then we'll book you in for a few years' time to come and talk about how <laughs> nothing's happened. Joe, thank you very much. That's Joe Barker. <laughs> Thanks, Mike.